Hey guys, welcome back to Tea Talk Tuesday. I am excited for today's topic. Um, I dropped a hint about this last week to let you know what we are going to be talking about, and it's vitamins and minerals. And I love talking about vitamins and minerals because it's a very confusing topic for a lot of people, especially if you haven't had any background knowledge in um, vitamins and what the different vitamins are for. And today we're going to talk specifically about um, two vitamins and one mineral, and it's going to be vitamin D, vitamin C, and iron. Now, vitamins and minerals are an essential part of our holistic health, and so it's super important that we're getting all of the appropriate vitamins and minerals that our bodies need in order to function at the most optimal level that we can. Now, you might be thinking, great, but there are a lot of vitamins out there, so how do I even know what ones I need? and what I should be supplementing with, what I should be getting through my food and all of that. And that was me for years, you guys, never knowing what to take because there was so much information out there. So I just never took anything at all. Well then fast forward to about, hmm, I don't even remember if it was my early 30, late 20s, early 30s, everybody was taking a multivitamin. So I thought, okay, I guess I'll jump on the, the women's multivitamin train and take the women's one a day multivitamin. And this was my what I call my pre-nutrition days. So I didn't really know anything about it or what I was doing other than I should take one because everybody else was taking it. So I often took it on an empty stomach and it always made me feel nauseous and dizzy and I just didn't like the feeling. So I stopped taking them and I thought, okay, well, if that vitamin makes me feel that way, they're all going to make me feel that way. So I refused to take vitamins for years and years and years. So now fast forward to about my late 30s, mid to late 30s. I had started transitioning to cleaner eating. It wasn't all plant-based at that point, um, but it was definitely cleaner, healthier choices. And despite the nutritional change, I still just wasn't feeling like myself, right? My energy levels were in the tank. My hands and my feet were falling asleep at the drop of a dime. It was almost like neuropathy. Um, they would tingle and hurt. And I just, overall, I felt drained. And I thought back, like growing up, my mom, she always had trouble with her hands and her and her feet falling asleep, especially her hands. I remember being in stores and she couldn't carry a lot of things in her hands for a long period of time because her hands would fall asleep. So she'd make me carry them. Or at night, she was constantly hanging her hands over the side of the bed to let the blood flow get back into them. And I was having all of those same issues, right? And I thought, oh gosh, my mother had these problems. Now, my mom eventually sought out a doctor who helped her determine that she was significantly deficient in vitamin B12. So she started getting B12 shots, which really helped her tremendously. And so that all got me thinking, hmm, maybe I should have my own vitamin levels checked, right? So I called up the doctor before my next well visit and asked if I could add vitamin levels to my normal blood, blood work. And at first they thought I was crazy. They're like, you wanna add what to your blood work? And I said, I wanna check my vitamin levels. They made me specifically tell them which vitamins I wanted to check. Now again, this was still sort of pre-nutrition days, so I didn't really know. I knew I wanted my B because of my mom and I knew vitamin D. So those are the two I went with and we had my thyroid check too. And anyways, I was frustrated by the whole thing. So we went ahead, we did my blood work. And um, after getting my results back, I was not surprised to find that I too was severely deficient in B12 and severely deficient in vitamin D. In fact, I was so deficient in both of these that I had to take what they called booster doses, really big doses for six months before I could transition to more of a normal supplementation, supplementation routine. Um, that's how bad they were. So anyways, with all of that being said, it's important to know where you stand with your vitamin, vitamin levels. Um, it really has an impact holistically on your health, how you feel, your energy levels, things like neuropathy, little symptoms and things that you might not realize um, could be coming from just the lack of the proper vitamins, right? So even if your doctor disagrees with you, ask them when you do your annual blood work as a part of your annual checkup, ask them to add the vitamins just for your own knowledge. They might think you're crazy, but you know what? It's for your own well-being um, and there's nothing wrong with asking. 
And if you're not already getting your blood work done every year, I also encourage you to do that because with your annual blood work, they're gonna check your red blood cell counts. Your, I believe they check your iron levels. They're gonna check um, your cholesterol numbers, all those things that really count towards monitoring and managing our health. So I encourage you to do that. So vitamins, I first I wanna talk about vitamin C. So vitamin C is considered a water soluble vitamin, which means it dissolves in water and then it thus can be found in the watery components of our food. So things like citrus, right? A lot of people associate oranges with vitamin C. Now vitamin C is also an antioxidant vitamin. So what that means is that it really works to fight against the free radicals that enter our body. And it's those free radicals that try to attack our cells and attack our bodies and cause damage. But vitamin C helps to fight against those. Now it specifically helps to protect the cells and tissues of our skin, our lungs, and our blood. Now there's other antioxidant vitamins that work with vitamin C, including vitamin E, you have the carotenoids, beta carotene, lutein, zeaxanthin, ze I can never say this properly, zeaxanthin, lycopene, selenium, and many other naturally non-nutrient um, compounds called phytochemicals, which you've probably heard me talk about those before because we find those in our fruits and our vegetables, our legumes, and also our whole grains, which are the components of a plant-based whole foods, plant-based diet, right? So vitamin C, when working with vitamin E, can help to block chain reactions that appear that promote heart disease and cancer. So it helps us fight against those things. Vitamin C is also required for the production and maintenance of collagen within our bodies. Now, I'm sure you've heard of collagen by now. Collagen supplements are literally blowing up the marketplace. They are everywhere. It's just one of those things where somebody catches on to a little nugget of information and it blows up, right? Now, collagen is the characteristic protein of our connective tissue. It includes our bones, our teeth, our skin, our tendons. So collagen synthesis is important in wound healing and the formation of scar tissue. And it's been shown to slow down the signs of aging. And that's why you guys are seeing collagen supplements everywhere. Because when you combine collagen with a healthy lifestyle and exercise, right, it has benefits in terms of our overall skin and how we look and how we feel. Um, now there's still a lot of research to be done on how effective collagen supplements can be, but vitamin C is required for your body to produce collagen on its own because your body does do that, okay? Now vitamin C has also been shown to help fight stress, fight infection, and um, so it's got a, a plethora of health benefits. Now we can find vitamin C in many of the fruits and vegetables available to us. But the problem is, you guys, the majority of Americans aren't even consuming the recommendations for fruit and vegetable intake in a given day, right? Only 9% of Americans reach their vegetable intake, their recommended veggie intake for the day. And only 12% meet the fruit recommendation. So if we're not consuming adequate fruits and vegetables, we're missing out on an abundance and abundance of nutrients, including vitamin C. So for those reasons, aside from those reasons above, why else is it important, right? It aids and helps our body with iron absorption. So this is going to lead into the next one I want to talk about, which isn't a vitamin, it's a mineral, is iron. So iron is an essential mineral that our body uses to form red blood cells. And our red blood cells are what transport oxygen around our body, right? They keep us going. So it's necessary for our body to produce energy. If we're deficient in iron, we're not getting the energy we need. So we're going to feel super tired, have trouble remembering things, and even have difficulty maintaining body temperature. So you might experience, you get really super hot and then you're really super cold. Maybe you're sweating one night and all kinds of things can happen with your body temperature. Now, iron deficiency is fairly common, especially among women of childbearing age, but usually your iron deficiency is a result of poor nutrition or inadequate intake of iron from our food. And the typical Western diet or standard American diet provides only about five to six grams of iron, excuse me, per every 1000 calories. So why does that matter? Because the recommended daily intake for iron for a woman before menopause 
is 18 milligrams per day. But for per 1,000 calories, if our standard diet only is giving us five to six grams, most women are consuming less than 2,000 calories a day. So if you're consuming less than that, you're not even meeting that recommended intake um, for iron through the standard American diet, right? Now, <clears throat> this means that a woman has to really be conscious about eating iron rich foods in order to meet that recommended daily intake for iron through food consumption alone. And it's really, really, can be really tricky to do. So if you're eating plant-based, it's even harder to reach the recommended daily intake for iron because you're not eating meat, you're not eating fish, and you're not eating poultry. And those are really, really good soy sources of what they call heme iron. Now I can get into all the reasons why you shouldn't be eating meat, fish, and poultry, but we'll save that for another day. Um, so the other form of iron is called non-heme iron. So heme iron you find through your meat, fish, poultry, right? It's easily absorbed by our bodies. But then there's also non-heme iron, which is found in your plant-based sources, but it's not quite as absorbed by our bodies as easily. We have to pair it with a vitamin C rich food in order for it to really help with that iron absorption from those plant-based sources. So if you're eating whole food plant-based like me, it's really important that you have adequate amounts of both vitamin C and iron because they work together in our body, okay? Um, so here's an interesting fact about iron and tea. <laughs> And I'm always gonna tell you guys the truth and be honest with you. So when we drink tea, it actually inhibits our body's ability to absorb non-heme iron. And remember, non-heme iron is the iron from plant sources. So you're probably wondering, well, what the heck? Then why am I even drinking tea? But trust me, don't stop drinking tea because I'm telling you this. The health benefits of drinking tea far outweigh the inhibition on our iron absorption. We just have to be sure that we're consuming enough iron and vitamin C in our overall diet through food, through supplementation, and there's nothing to worry about. You can enjoy your tea all day long, trust me. Now, if you're eating whole food plant-based like me, you do have to pay a little closer attention to the food sources of iron that you're eating, making sure you're getting a lot of it and supplementing because like I said, if you're not eating that meat, fish, and poultry, it's harder to reach those levels. But here's what I want you to know. It's not just tea that inhibits your iron absorption. It's also coffee. <laughs> it's also chocolate. It's also red wine. So let's be honest, we're not gonna stop eating and drinking all these things, right? We're just not, it's not practical. It's just the way we live. We like to enjoy these things. So don't stop drinking tea just because I told you that, but I wanted you to know that because like I said, I'm a fact finder. I like to, to share everything with you guys. Um, so with that being said, now I want to talk about vitamin D. So did you know that 42% of Americans are vitamin D deficient and nearly 77% are vitamin D insufficient? So deficient means you're not even meeting the recommended daily amount. Excuse me, insufficient just simply means we're not getting enough of it. Most people don't have enough vitamin D and that can be for a ton of different reasons, right? So some areas of the country, your vitamin D deficiency and insufficiencies are even higher. And that's because vitamin D is what we call our sunshine vitamin, right? We, our bodies make vitamin D through direct exposure to sunlight. Our skin has to have direct sunlight exposure, right? That's how our bodies create vitamin D. In some areas of the country, like where we live in Buffalo, New York, you're not getting sunshine all year round. And even when you're getting the sunshine in the wintertime, those rays aren't necessarily coming directly at you when they feel like they might be. Plus, you're likely covered up in long sleeves, coats, gloves, hats, so you're really not getting the direct exposure even if you're outside, right? So that coupled with modern day jobs, a lot of our jobs require us to be inside behind desks, behind computers, so we're just not being exposed to the sun during the daylight hours because we're working, right? So there's lots of different reasons that people are vitamin D deficient. Now, vitamin D, unlike vitamin C, is a fat-soluble sol vitamin. So in general, all of our body's needs for it can be met 
with synthesis within our body. And again, that's why you hear people call it the sunshine vitamin. So um, because we don't get enough vitamin D naturally, our bodies aren't creating enough vitamin D naturally, we have to get it from our food sources and supplemental sources. And it's essential, you guys, that you have adequate amounts of vitamin D. It's just the vitamin D levels can impact so many things in, when it comes to your holistic health and really impact the way you feel. So I mentioned to you earlier that I was severely B12 deficient. Well, at the same time that we discovered that, we discovered I was severely deficient in vitamin D. And when I say severely, I'm talking like when you get your lab results back, they give you a range. It's like the low end and the high end. And it's a pretty big range, right? I was like below the low end. So like the red zone, even below the red zone. So like the minus red zone. It was really, really bad. And so I had to supplement with vitamin D and I will forever supplement with vitamin D, I think, because of that. But I also always get my vitamin D levels checked. Now, the role of vitamin D in our bodies is to control the calcium levels in our blood. And this is going to impact our bone growth, our development. It's important for immune function, controlling inflammation, even our muscle function. Um, now, as we age, the recommended daily allowance for vitamin D increases because as we age, our bodies have less of an ability to synthesize vitamin D on their own. So supplementation can definitely help us maintain adequate levels of vitamin D, which in turn helps with our calcium absorption and keeps our bones feeling really strong. Sorry, we had a brief interruption. <laughs> all right, so now you're wondering, okay, great. Why all the talk about vitamins and minerals today? And why specifically these three? Why vitamin D, vitamin C, and iron, right? The truth is these two vitamins in this mineral are essential to our holistic health and well-being. And what I'm so excited about is that Cepology recognized that, and they didn't just recognize that, that, but they specifically selected vitamin D, vitamin C, and iron. So they were very specific in what they focused on. And what they've done is in conjunction with their medicinal Heal Thyself line of teas and essential oils that they have, they're adding what they call Heal Thyself boosters. So they're adding a vitamin D, a vitamin C booster, as well as an iron booster. And I am just over the moon about it because they truly can impact our overall health, right? Um, and it's something that is going to come in a powdered format. And they're flavored, but they come in a powdered format, so they're gonna be easily digested, easily absorbed by our bodies. Um, they can be added to water, they can be added to smoothies, your yogurts, your oatmeal bowls, anything. Um, and you're going to see flavors like Dutch chocolate, caramel mocha, raspberry lemonade. So I'm super excited to give you all those details. It really, it really is just a win-win because you're getting the benefits of these added vitamins and minerals into your overall nutritional regimen. Now, you're probably wondering though, do I need all three of them? How do I know? How do I know what I need, right? Well, the verdict is really out on that one and it's gonna be really up to you and very, very specific to each and every one of you. Not every single one of you is gonna need all three of these. Some of you may need none. Some of you may need all three. Some of you might just need the vitamin D and the iron. What I highly encourage you to do, if you've never had your vitamins and mineral levels tested, specifically these ones, your iron, your vitamin D, your vitamin C, also get your, your B vitamins checked. Um, but if you've never had them checked, work with your primary care physician, get your blood work done, get the vitamin levels checked so that you know where you stand. If you've got adequate levels of vitamin D, you probably don't need the booster, but maybe you're lacking in vitamin C, or maybe you're really severely deficient in vitamin D and never knew it like I was, right? Um, but work with your primary care physician to have those levels checked. I check them right now. I'm checking mine every six months. Um, I pay to have it done that mid year, um, out of my pocket through the doctor still, but, um, typically your standard blood work is covered through your insurance, but you've got to check with your plan because these days everything is different. Um, so that's what I recommend you do is have your levels checked. 
know where you stand in these areas so that you know specifically which ones can help you. Now, I'm the, the verdict is still out on iron as well because I know with my blood work, the doctor will say my iron levels look fine, but based on how I feel a lot of the times and the um, problems I have with the neuropathy and the tingling in my hands and stuff, I'm actually going to add the iron supplement to my diet and see if that helps because again it works with the vitamin c which is going to help with the vitamin b's it's all connected right so i'm going to add it and see if it makes a difference for me even though some of those levels might look borderline okay um so that's what i recommend to determine which ones you need the other thing too when you start implementing one of these as part of your routine you'll know fairly quickly, like within three to five days, maybe seven days, if it's having some sort of impact. And to determine that, keep a food journal, a food journal, so so used to saying food journal, keep a journal on how you're feeling, right? So do keep a food journal, what you ate that day, what teas you drank, what um, supplements you took, how you were feeling in the morning, midday, how you felt at night, how you felt the next morning you woke up, those things help you really hone in and tune in on what your specific needs are. Because like I said, just because one person needs all of them doesn't mean the next person needs all of them. It just depends specifically on you. Um, I will say this when it comes to iron and when it comes to these vitamins, the maximum amounts that you can take are pretty high. So it's hard to quote unquote overdose on them. But you can essentially take too much, especially iron. So um, it would be super hard, honestly, with the standard American diet, it would be super hard to reach those maximum levels. Um, so there's really not much of a concern for that. Plus the amount that they've included in their boosters is really, really reasonable and doesn't exceed that um, recommended daily intake. So you should be fine. So. That's why I was excited to talk to you guys about vitamins and minerals, because again, they have such an important part in our overall holistic health. And now Cipology has really stepped up and they are basically arming you with exactly what you need to help with these specific, um, these specific vitamins and minerals. And again, vitamin C, vitamin D and iron are essential, essential to our overall health and well-being, the whole package. Um, so Next week, I will talk in more detail about the ingredients in these boosters, um, how what the ingredients are and how they benefit us and all of that and give you some more details because they will be available starting next Monday, the 22nd. So Tea Talk Tuesday next week, um, I will give you more details about these guys um, and maybe some of our other new products. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to reach out to me. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye.